Yo, what up guys, this is Shaky. So, you've probably, your are your gear, and you're like, well, oh my god, how am I ever gonna get my gear up? I can't make money, I have a prize Arca! Well, let me just let you know that you're not alone. There's many people who roulette in this game. Obviously, it's not recommended, but even I've rouletted once. So yeah, even I've been there, so I can really relate to how you might feel right now, right? Like, you're like, okay, I'm at a roulette, I might get something, and all of a sudden, you got nothing. <laughs> and then you're just like, oh, well, I'm gonna quit BDO now! Let me just give you some tips, okay, first and foremost. Before we even talk about any sort of, like, money making and, like, how you want to get your gear up, first thing is, I would recommend, just take a break, because BDO is that kind of game where, like, you're gonna burn out if you just keep going ham and then you just fail stuff. And it can be really demotivating. So the healthiest thing you can do for your mental state is take a break for like a week or a couple of days. Just don't play BDO, right? Then come back to the game and be refreshed and ready to go. The second thing is, is going to be a mindset change. I would really, really recommend don't roulette again. Uh, I've roulette once, like I said, and ever since then I've been I've made plenty of gains and it's been helping out quite a bit don't roulette your gear this third tip is kind of optional it's really up to you but there's a few ways to go on about it when it comes to progressing your gear if you roulette it it's really really recommended that you do not enhance your gear on the way up right now in this game there's plenty of ways to make really high silver per hour from a consistency standpoint and the long-term standpoint if you buy your gear you're most likely going to get geared up a lot quicker it's going to be more consistent and you're going to feel like you're actually progressing in the game rather than just always like blowing stuff up because that can be a really bad feeling now on the other hand you can't enhance or profit what does this mean this game loves to award people free stacks all the time whether it's from your bartali books and all that good stuff they're gonna give you free stack you're gonna get free stacks from events so if you just have a 50 stack laying around you're like oh let me go tap a duo tongue grad ring or let me go make a try really quick for profit and then you sell it that's completely fine i do that myself as well but the whole point is to get you to steer away from relenting because relenting is just gonna really hurt you in the long run all right, man. So, like, let's say this is your gear after you're loaded, right? You're just using the, the free try suppressed gear, right? And you have a Zulas, you got no accessory, you're 200 AP. How would you progress from here? Let's talk about getting the soft cap AP quick. So, realistically thinking about it, you're gonna hit probably like the 261 AP mark pretty easily, just getting full try accessories and full tail weapons. For most classes, you won't really go start grinding heavier DP places like Achman or Histria until like 261 AP Nuver, just so it's a little bit more consistent. Usually before then, most people stick around to Miramox and Mansions, Gahaz, Centaurs, ETC. What you want to do at this point is to just improve your speed of grinding. So how do we do that? Just build your AP up. So the first thing I would say, Tat Zarka, right? Just buy it. Boom. After that, Tat Dandy. After that, Tat Nuver. There you go, now you're 218. Now what you want to do is start going from whatever is the cheapest silver to get some AP gain, right? So now we can go ahead and get a Crescent Ring. Try that, you can buy that as try. Get a Bassy Belt, try that. Then you want to get your Ogre before your Tongue Grads because they're worth about the same price usually. But the Ogre will give you more AP. And once you do that, you can then get your Tongue Grad Ring. And, and as long as you have done your journals, look at that, your 260 AP. Nuver, and all you have to do is put one Capris level into your dandy, you hit the next bracket. Hitting 261 AP right now with the new journals is pretty much the new soft cap for AP. It's really, really, really accessible now. Once you hit this point, you want to start going for your armors. Now, early on in BDO, DR is better. So, you want to just go for your Tet Bags, you want to get Tet Dim, you want to get Tet Griffin, and then for your shoes, make sure you go Erdogan's. Early game, DR is better for pretty much every class. Now, boom, you're back up to full tech gear, your soft cap again, you're feeling good. Now it's gonna get a little bit harder. Now you're gonna be trying to break hard cap because now everything's gonna be costing a lot more money to get your enhances up and get your upgrades. So the easiest thing to do would be to get full tech accessories and a Vel's heart before going for a pen. It's much easier than going for a pen. So tech Bassy, you get tech Cressy Ring, you can get 
another Tet Crossy Ring. Then you can get your Ogre, Tet that bad boy, Tungrad Tets. Then you can get your Velzart. Just full Tet accessories. Right now with the books, we'll put you at 282 Awakened AP, which is really good, right? Now from here, you can either go for a Tet Black Star or a Pen Weapon. I prefer the Tet Black Star because it gives me a monster damage for grinding. Put you at 288. Once you're here, you can decide to go for a Pen Awakening or a Tet Black Star for grinding or even a Pen Open for PvP or Pen Zarga. Up to you. Main thing is you want to hit that 285 to 293 AP mark before you start going for DP again. At end game, at the end game level, especially for PvP in this game, evasion is king. It is the best stat. So what a lot of people do once they hit 600 plus gear score. They start going for evasion, so what you want to do is you want to go for levers at pen. And at this point, I would also swap out your tech griffin and go for a heave helmet at pen. You'd want to C11 your heave, and then you want to C C3 your levers. So once you're at this point, then you want to get a pen dim, because it's going to give you more stats compared to your muskin. And then you can Capris 1 level that, your 324. Then you can get your muskins at pen. You're pretty much in the meta. You're good to go. You're not your full pen. And then at this point, you're just playing the Capris game. So you're trying to get full C9 armors at this point. And then once you're full C9 armors, you'll be 353 DP. And then you can start going for the AP. So your distortions and your pen weapons and then pen accessories eventually. So that's kind of how you want to progress your gear nowadays. Now that you actually have a plan of how to get your gear up, it's all about just going at it one piece at a time. As long as you're going at it one piece at a time, you got a clear vision of what you're doing. You're going about it in an organized fashion. Go at it. Go at your own pace. Don't stress out. And just have fun with the game. That's what it's about, right? Okay. Now that you've got that all. Now you're probably going to be asking, hey, well, I blew up my gear or I'm a new player. Where do I go grind for money? Like, what do I do? Okay. So this is what I would recommend for pretty much any new player that comes into the game. At this point, getting to 168p is almost a given. So we're going to assume that most people in this game are at least 168p at this point. Even as a new player, you literally get to like 160, 170 in like a day. It's super easy nowadays, okay? You have a few grind spots that you can consider. You got polys, which is pretty good. You're looking at about 50 to 70 mil an hour. These are just typically all about the same. You got gahas, which is also about 50 to 70 mil an hour. Now you also have the alternative of grinding Shira Ruin. Kind of a dilemma here, right? It's really bad money. However, while you're leveling up and repairing your gear, you might be able to get an infinite potion piece. So I'd really probably recommend going after that infinite potion piece if I were you. All right, now let's say you hit about 200 AP and you're getting super bored of those spots. Like you're just like, oh, I don't want to grind there ever again. Don't worry, there's plenty of spots you can do at 200 AP that actually aren't even talked about that much either when it comes to money. A good spot is actually KG Ruins. KG Ruins, if you have a level 10 node here, you can average a good amount of money. About 70, about 70 million hours, it's not bad. Centaurs is another really good spot that people don't talk about too much. You can average about 70 to 85 mil here, at times even 100 mil. It just really depends on what the market price is looking like. But at the 200 AP mark, this is kind of like the go-to for what I would say. Once you hit 235 AP Kudum, a spot like Mansions and Miramox can come into play. So if you're soloing, Mansions is really good for money at 235 AP. It becomes really consistent. Most classes are going to start pulling at least 3.5k trash an hour at this point, And you'll be making good money. At 235 AP, people will also take your Miramox parties. If you're running advanced loot skills, you can make at least 100 mil an hour there too. So you got these two options for you. Then, you finally hit that healthy bracket of being back at 261. You now have the option of going back to Aquaman in the desert. Then you also have the option of going to Hishia depending on what class you are. Spots like Aquaman and Hishia really depend on the class that you're playing at the time. Once you hit 261 AP Kudum, then you can grind places like Star's End or you can just turbo farm Aquaman and Hishia still. But Star's End becomes a place where you can start gambling for those earring drops which make you quite a bit of money. Finally, you've now hit the legendary Tet Black Star 273 Kudo mark. You also have places that open up to you such as Kratuga. Kratuga with really high AP is a really nice lazy spot and you can end up making anywhere from 150 to 200 mil an hour there with loot scrolls. Same thing can apply to Star's End. Star's End on average is about 160 to 180 mil per hour, counting in all the earring drops that you should be getting. But yeah, once you hit those really high AP brackets, like once, you're two, like once you're 273 Kudum, you're most likely going to be sticking between Star's End, Kratuga, and Hysteria. You won't, you won't even be going to Aquaman anymore because you just have so much AP. 
you're making way more money at these other spots. Once you get at least 324 DP Kudum, that's probably when a place like Sakraya might open up to you. Although at that DP, it's still quite tough and it's gonna hurt. You know, it's gonna be pretty sweaty. But Sakraya in general right now is pretty much like the best money spot in the game. Um, when I solo there, I get about 200 mil an hour with loose scrolls, so it's it's really good if you can if you're able to grind that. And then um, if you're really bored, you got abandoned monastery too at this point. Um, with the duo, it's about 150, 160 mil an hour. But for a duo, it's not bad, right? Like it's good. But now you kind of know where you guys want to grind and all that good stuff. Here's my bonus tips while grinding. Having things like T4 pets is super important. And a lot of you guys are probably going to be like, well, hey, I can't really swipe. Well don't need the like this game you can buy all your pets off the market and then you're probably going to be like, going to be asking well how do i get it well if you look in the pro shop there's usually always deals going on and they usually have like pet packs right so what you want to do is go to the market and see what pack is being sold with the pets and then once you find that pack that's being sold with a pet you can just then go to the market and put up a pre-order for that pet that you want and then usually people will buy the, the deals and then they'll sell that pet on the market usually as a result. And that can be a way that you get your T4 pets. Just always have an order up on the market for that pet and slam your pets for T4. I cannot stress how much money T4 pets add to your income. And then if you got if you got storage mains, I listen, put potions in your warehouse, get your buffs in your warehouse, get ready. When you go grind, you want to have enough stuff in your inventory that you don't have to leave that grind spot for like the rest of the day. Like you want to log in, grind that spot for as long as you're online and then you, before you log off, you're going to bank and then that way you're consistent. Because you don't want to be like running back and forth between grinding. It's, the, it's like the biggest mistake I see people do. Just really make sure that if you're going to go to a grind spot, make sure you're ready to stay there and like not leave. That way you can optimize your time. And that can really help. But yeah, I don't want to drag out the video to be too long. I think that should be it for the video. That just pretty much explains everything and some basic tips to get your gear from a roulette. Even if you're a new player too, this should really help you guys hopefully. And if you guys have any questions, just leave some down in the comments and we'll get to it. Also guys, don't forget that we're going to be doing that Musa coaching video. So if uh, if anyone's interested, you got to make sure you follow me on Twitter. It's at the shaky bank. Should you guys follow me on Twitter and I'll pick a random follower for that. We're back in the daily grind, like I said, for the upload. So I'll see y'all tomorrow, boys. Make sure you guys follow me on Twitch. Join the community Discord. Follow me on Twitter. And don't forget to hit that sub and like button and comment down below. I'm out. Peace.